Good morning. This is Pastor Laura Cavendish at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Asheville, Ohio. And we come together to share devotions during this season of Lent. These devotions have been more than appropriate for any other time of the year. So if you're tuning in at another time and want to watch the whole series, um, it's called Lenten Devotions 2023. And I may change that in the future to just be a devotion series, Marks of the Christian. And you will find more. Um, we have been doing an intense study of Romans chapter 12. Um, and our author has been David L. Miller. And um, today we continue with day 31. And um, our title is Giving Yourself. And we are still on that verse, Romans 12, 13, a contribute to the needs of the saints. <clears throat> All right, so here's from our author. And as we have learned, he sometimes freely goes in and out of conversation with us and then with um, the God that he addresses. And sometimes it's Brother Jesus. And um, so let's go into that. Here's from David Miller. There's a large Bavarian cowbell on my office shelf. You can wake the dead with that thing. I accuse my old friend Fritz of stealing it off a cow somewhere in the Alps of his native Germany, and he just smiled. Somewhere there is a lost cow. That's in parentheses. And somewhere there are human souls who are alive and thriving because Fritz lived. It could have been otherwise. Displaced far from home in the chaos of Germany after World War II, he was shot at more than once for stealing potatoes from farmers to stay alive. He never forgot what it was to be hungry, scared, and on your own at 17. Decades later, he was a steel worker in Hammond, Indiana, a machinist, the Nazis had taught him well when he was 16, so he could help build fighter planes. When the steel mill went on strike, Fritz fulfilled a lifelong dream to travel the world. On one stop along a road between Agra and Jaipur in India, he saw two of the most, two of the poorest, most bedraggled children he'd ever seen. He called them over to his car, reached in his pocket, and gave whatever money was there. Their eyes grew large as saucers, and they ran back to a ramshackle slum with open sewers and a single water pump that served thousands. Yeah, if he got some troubles in the world, Fritz would sigh, but the world changed because of those two children. Fritz went home to Indiana and didn't forget. He knew hunger. He knew fear. He knew what it was to be beaten down. And he talked to his congregation about hunger. He talked to church leaders about hunger. He learned all he could about what keeps people poor and hungry, and then talked to state and federal legislators about hunger. He was an old German refugee stumping through musty basements of little churches and sometimes stopping members of Congress in Capitol corridors in Washington, D.C. He helped raise millions of dollars for the hungry and forgotten. There are people alive today because somewhere on the road between Agra and Jaipur, Fritz de determined to give himself to one cause, one mission, one love, one Lord. May he rest in peace and may your holy angels and two small boys rise up and call him blessed. Luke 6, 36 says, Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Merciful. 
And that's from, I, I hope I told you, Luke 6, 36. Okay. Here's our theological thought. And today it comes from... It's a reference we had before, and it's not making sense to me. It's from a reference to Western asceticism. Maybe that's a magazine reference because it just gives us a phone. Uh, no, we got to have more than that. So this is a previous reference. I'll find it. Here it is, Alba Alloy in Western Asceticism. Um, and so this is more. Alba Alloy in Western Asceticism, the Library of Christian Classics, edited by Owen Chadwick. And this time we're going to pages 184 and 185. There we are. A brother asked an old man, there are two monks. One stays quietly in his cell, fasting for six days at a time and laying many austerities upon himself. And the other ministers to the sick. Which of them is more acceptable to God? The old man answered, if the brother who fast six days even hung himself up by his nostrils, he could never be the equal of him who ministers to the sick. <clears throat> that reminds me the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is um, And what love is defined as in that 1 Corinthians 16. Okay. So we've had some thoughts given us today about giving yourself. Questions for you to help you have even greater ideas and insights and let it settle in. Who for you is an example of giving themselves to others? How do our good works outlive us? How does painful experience teach us mercy? I think about Trey and there were times when he wanted candy and he did not get candy. And now he shares little stories about how if he has the money, which sometimes he doesn't, he'll buy candy for little kids um, when they're checking out at the store. Um, so his own painful experience of having to not get candy when he wanted candy has taught him to offer candy um, as people are at the checkout looking for candy. Um, Psalm 41, verses 1 through 2. Happy are those who consider the poor. The Lord protects them and keeps them alive. They are called happy in the land. All right, so now you get to reflect on this with some writing. I get to two. To what do you want to give yourself for God? What do you want written as your epitaph? What joys have you known in showing mercy? There we go. So... I'll write those down, but again, to what do you want to give yourself for God? What do you want written as your epitaph? And what joys have you known in showing mercy? And here's the prayer. Thank you, my Lord, for Fritz. 
may I too give himself, give myself to one holy cause for you. I'll read that again since I stumbled. Thank you, my Lord, for Fritz. And maybe if you have thought of someone, you put their name in. May I too give myself to one holy cause for you. Amen. All right. All right. That's the end of today's devotion. I encourage you to go in peace this day and that Christ go with you and that you be inspired um, by those who show you jo joy in showing mercy. All right. We'll see you tomorrow.